Hi, I'm Jay Beal. I'm CTO over at InGuardians, here to talk about attacking Kubernetes at KringleCon, where I am freezing my tukas off. Uh, I think it's because I keep reaching into the ice to get the freshest of the sushi. So this talk is all demo. It is tied to last year's story from the Holiday Hack Challenge, where the Tooth Fairy was the villain and... Uh, we're continuing by saying that she left a logic bomb behind running in a Kubernetes cluster. And if we don't deactivate that logic bomb, it would be bad, like Egon Spengler bad. So uh, one of her developers, luckily, has uh, found redemption and uh, wants to help us out. Um, and Kent's going to try to help us get the logic bomb's password before it causes bad things to happen. So what is Kent, uh, wh what's Kent's starting point? He has complete administrative privilege in his namespace, a very common thing um, for uh, organizations to do. Um, but outside of his namespace, he has very little privilege. He's kind of got read only and he can only read some things. So this cluster is staged uh, in GKE, Google's managed Kubernetes service, um, which creates nodes as virtual machine instances, GC instances. Um, in a Google Cloud project. Um, so Kent's got some ideas about how he might do things, um, but let's go straight into our demo. So if you like what we're doing, if you like what you're seeing here, if you're really interested, uh, please come take a look at InGuardian's Kubernetes work in general, and especially our open source Paradis program. So with that said, I'm gonna go right into the demo. So Kent is, uh, on the Kubernetes cluster, he's just doing a quick like look at all the namespaces that are out there. There are a ton. He knows that the thing he's looking for is probably a secret um, that's in one of those namespaces, but he doesn't know which one, and he probably doesn't even have access to list the secrets. Um, he made a list of namespaces. We can kind of see the one that he's got. Developer Kent um, and Developer Kent, he can list secrets and get their and get their contents and even create new ones. Um, but outside of that, in the cluster at large. Um, if you were to even go namespace by namespace, he can't list he can't list or read secrets and the other things. So he's going to start by just creating a quick um, pod in Kubernetes in the kind of one of the simpler ways. So we're going to use kube, kube controls dry run and tell it, hey, can you give me a quick definition, a quick manifest for a pod um, that's going to run nginx? I'm going to call it Kent to the dry cleaners. Uh, a reference to the movie Real Genius, um, which you absolutely have to see. So, um, so we've written out that manifest. It says uh, it says a YAML file, and um, we can take that file and just run this command one more time, or copy and paste, and write it out to a pod file. And we're going to run kube control create, and that's going to create our Kent to the dry cleaners pod. And now Kent's going to exec into this pod because that'll put him in the cluster instead of on his Mac laptop. Um, he's also gonna install JQ real quick because it's JSON query um, as uh, Carlos Vendramini at InGuardians has taught me, it's an incredibly useful tool um, for, you know, for going through and both querying and changing JSON on the fly really easily. So um, uh, Ken's first step is to go and talk to uh, the cloud provider's metadata uh, API. And uh, because uh, cloud instances will very, very often have service accounts, kind of like IAM accounts. Um, and, uh, and so he wants to see, you know, those, those accounts in GCP, they'll, ha they'll often have read, on read only, uh, but read to every bucket. Um, and that can be pretty cool. So he's gonna go and basically query and find out what service accounts he's got. It looks like two, Busta Kube, and default, but default is a symlink basically to bust a cube. So he'll ask, we're gonna do another query and basically ask the metadata API if we can have a, uh, uh, a token that we can use to authenticate to the, to the uh, Google Cloud services. So we just throw token, uh, the default and then the token on the end of that. And then we can take that and we're just gonna parse it out with JQ. Um, so we're going to, um, toss that into JQ and get at that uh, access token field. And so we get that access token field, we throw it through said to pull off the quotation marks. And now we have something that we can put into a variable, we're gonna call that variable token, and token is that is now that token. It's only gonna, things only alive for 3600 3, seconds. 
Um, but during that time, it's useful to us. We can pull one in, another one if we want to. We'll need the project ID as a number, not just as a name. Um, but the metadata API will happily give that to us, at which point we can start doing authenticated requests. We're going to do um, an authenticated request against the storage API, where we're presenting a token as a bearer token. Storage API for bucket storage. We do our slash B, which means I want to list all the buckets that are available in this project. And the first thing we get is basically something that says, nope, sorry, no good. Um, this is basically a workload identity that's, that's uh, hitting us here, uh, a GKE feature, a friend of mine, uh, Aaron Small, helped ship. And this is, um, and this is making it so that we're not getting, we're not getting the nodes, uh, Kent's not getting the nodes uh, uh, service account. He's, he's getting one that's mapped to his, to this specific workload, which is turning out to be useless. So we're gonna have to try something else. And so now Kent's going to try something else. He's going to create another pod. And this pod, it's a little hard to follow with the word wrap, so we'll do it a second time. This pod is going to, um, it's going to be the same kind of Nginx pod. Um, he's going to call the pod privilege as a name, but use the same image. But uh, we're, going to, we're going to have the, the dry run, kick this thing out as JSON, throw it into JQ, and have JQ set uh, the uh, specification um, for one of the pods containers and make that container have the, uh, have the security context privileged and, uh, privileged pods, privileged containers, you should basically never have, um, you'll have it with a few of the control plane elements, but you really shouldn't have anybody else creating their own. Um, so this is a, a JSON version of that manifest where security context, um, has privilege set to true. And so we've written it out to a file called YAML, but it's JSON and uh, Kube Control doesn't care. So we tell Kube Control, here you go, stage this. It creates pod called privileged and Kent execs into it. And the first thing we see is this is what makes a privileged pod a privileged pod. Um, uh, it's uh, among other things, we have all of these devices from the host, from the machine that this container is running on, published into the container. Um, and that is no bueno for defenders. Luckily, our defender here is the Tooth Fairy, and uh, and we're trying to, you know, uh, we're trying to uh, fix things. So we've got uh, one of those devices is DevSDA, the the actual hard drive raw device from the uh, from the uh, virtual machine. So um, we do a quick F disk just to see which partitions are which. Looks like SDA one's probably uh, going to be really really useful to us, and so we mount. SDA1 into slash mount, we root into there so that we basically, as we explore the file system um, in this shell, we're gonna we we we're in the file system for the host um, for that hard disk, not the file system for the container. And so I know I can find in home community spin a copy of kube control, which I'm gonna want in here, or Ken's gonna want. And so um, we'll find some other things like take a quick look at OS release to see, yep, my, the container may have been uh, Debian, but the host is Ubuntu. Um, we can see the, the name of this. It's a, a GKE you node know, that, you know, ends in that FJ9. Um, we can see it's a Kubernetes, you know, look at the message of the day, just kind of get a feel for, yep, this is a node. So let's look at something else that's really, really useful. It makes one of the ways that we can really, really make this attack count. Um, there's a kubelet and there's a kube proxy both of way on on every node and they both have their own cert to make requests against the api server um, we're going to use the kubelets because the kubelet has to um, connect the api server to the container runtime whether it's docker or container d or whatever and it has to the cool thing is that it for any pods that are running on this machine on this instance this virtual machine the kubelet is going to be the thing that's that's a uh, getting the, the secrets from the, uh, that's getting the secrets um, from, uh, from the Kubernetes control plane and passing it into the containers. Um, we're staging these containers with those. And so the Kubelet will be able to read all the secrets for anything that's staged on itself, but not on other, on other uh, but not on other instances. Um, so there's a kube config, which refers to this PKI, um, this PKI directory's, you know, client cert. Uh, if we look at that client cert, 
um, we find something we like, which is it's going to have not just a public key, but also private key. So this is going to let us authenticate to Kubernetes as the Kubelets service, as the Kubelets uh, Kubernetes service account. And so um, we're just do a quick list, like get all the get a list of all the pods. Um, we see that you know while there were tons of namespaces, the only three really in play are Kube System with the control plane and developer Kent that we're playing with, and then this other thing GPS, um, a reference to last year's holiday hack challenge, which was impressive and fun as heck. Um, and there are all these pods in GPS called logic bomb passwords. Remember, we're looking for the logic bombs passwords, so that's good for us. Um, so we need to find ones that that uh, that are that are uh, staged on the same node on this FJ9 node. And so we're going to grep for just FJ9. And these are the pods on the cluster that are staged to this one. And we see a bunch of control plane elements, but we also see four of those logic bomb passwords. And um, and so let's go and look at the um, let's go and look at the logic bomb passwords kind of status and definition um, to find out what their secrets are so that we can go and request those secrets. So we'll take our, we'll take our kube control, um, continuing to use the kubelets cert, we'll get the pod definition for this specific pod. We'll ask for it in, in uh, YAML. Um, we forgot to enter the namespace. We add that namespace in, and we see there's a volume called Logic Bomb Shutdown. It's provided. Its contents come straight from the secret called Logic.Bomb.Shutdown, and they're passed in and placed on the file system in uh, the Etsy directory. Um, so what we're going to do is basically ask for that, ask for the a copy of that secret. Um, and so if we um, so just one more time, noting that that's this that we're going for secrets that are only held by pods that are running on this node. That's that's really critical to understand. We're going to uh, do our kube config, ask for the secret. You know, the first one just gives us the metadata for the secret. So if we ask for an output in JSON or YAML, we'll get the actual secret. And so we ask for it in JSON, realizing we don't have JQ in here, we ask for it in YAML, and then we're going to grep out part one. Um, so we can just get that uh, the data, and it's uh, it is base64 encoded. So we're going to parse that, throw it into awk, um, try to toss it into base64. But there's a space, so we'll just we'll change the way we're using awk, and we get it. And here's our password. It says the first password is a, a line from Real Genius that Kent says, "You will rue the day." Um, but it says you'll need a second password. Got you got one flag. You got one more flag to go. And that's going to be found in a storage bucket, in a GCS storage bucket. So we know our next target is to get that storage bucket access. So it's time to, it's time to try harder on that, on uh, on the uh, on the GCS, um, on the uh, on the GCS attack path. So let's go and try something else. So Kent goes and basically says, okay, I'm going to try a different kind of thing. Instead of privileged, now I'm going to make my pod start with with the uh, host network set to true which means it's going to, instead of starting its own network namespace, it's going to use the, it's going to use the network namespace um, belonging to the virtual machine it's on, which can evade workload identity. And so um, we're going to stage that um, pod. Kent's going to exec into that pod, and now he's going to curl the metadata API. We see a different service count. This one looks like what we're used to when, metadata, when, when uh, workload identity isn't in play. So he asks for an access token. Um, going to try to parse that out with JQ. Um, realize JQ is not there, so add JQ real quick. Since this is recorded, I was able to skip past that. And so we've got the access token. Um, we're parsing out with JQ and ripping off the, the double quotes, and um, that gives us uh, and that gives us what we need. So now we're going to set GCP token to that, and now we're going to construct our curl request. Um, to list buckets um, against that, you know, against that uh, uh, bucket storage API using a bearer token. Now, the first time I write this, I use token instead of GCP tokens, so we don't use the right bearer token and, and we're not authorized. Um, but uh, uh, I or Kent figures this out and uh, uses the right bearer token, and here we go. We've got a list of storage buckets. There's only one. There's only one bucket. It's called Tooth Fairy Second Password. Uh, that's a pretty good name. Uh, that's a pretty. I have a lot of hope there. 
And, uh, and now we're going to do B, then the bucket name, then O for objects. Give me a list of objects. And there's only one object. And that one object is uh, a file called secondpassword.txt. And so we're going to take, you can take this nice little media link and paste it right in. So after our, you know, after our headers, we can throw in that media link and we're going to get the, uh, we're going to get the file. And we got the contents of that file, the second password, which is in the immortal words of Socrates, I drank what? So, hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please dig into Kubernetes and cloud native security some more. I'd love to talk Kubernetes with you here in the North Pole or even collaborate with you on InGuardian's open source Kubernetes penetration testing tool, Paradis. Um, also, Kubernetes is cool in that there are a ton of people who are not just doing great work, but they're also eager to share it with others and help people get involved. Um, I'd recommend following a number of notable Kubernetes security folks work, and I've listed their Twitter handles here, but go looking also for their talks, their blog posts, their books, and their tools. Um, uh, by the way, the Kubernetes project has a new special interest group, SIG Security, and it's a really welcoming community looking for more hackers. So thanks a lot. I'll see you around KringleCon and the Holiday Hack Challenge. Bye-bye. Ho, 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 ho.